Say we have a function f of x defined over minus a to a. So given the coordinate system and the bounds, say this is a function. Now we want to know its behavior beyond the given domain. This is where we need analytic continuation. So what is analytic continuation? Well, analytic continuation is the technique to extend the domain of a given analytic function. This begs the question, what is an analytic function? It is a function that is locally given by its convergent power series. Analytic functions are infinite series of the following form. They arise as Taylor series of infinitely differentiable functions. To have a better understanding of this topic, we need to have an understanding of the following. So let us go through them sequentially. The Taylor series for a given function is the best polynomial approximation up to any given degree near the point x equals to a. It is given as follows. Interval of convergence is any open, closed, or semi-closed set of values of x for which the Taylor series converges to the value of the function. Outside this interval, the Taylor series is either undefined or does not relate to the function. The radius of convergence is half the length of the interval. Later we will see that this is the radius of the circle in the complex plane that the Taylor series converges into. A complex differentiable function is called a holomorphic function. Say a function is given from C to C for all Z belonging to C. The function is said to be complex differentiable if the following limit exists. If the function is complex differentiable at every Z belonging to U belonging to C, then F is holomorphic on U, where U is a subset of C. The limit for the differentiability condition is very similar to the differentiability condition for just the real axis. But then how is it different? Well, due to the increased dimensionality as a result of the addition of the complex axis, when h approaches 0, it must do so from all possible directions. The Cauchy integral formula says that the values of a holomorphic function inside a disk are determined by the values of that function on the boundary of that disk. As we can see in the figure, gamma is the boundary of any region whose interior contains A. For a holomorphic function from U to C, and gamma being a circle contained in U, then for any A in the disk, bound by gamma is given as follows. Coming to the cauchy riemann equations. See, we view the complex plane as a two-dimensional real surface. Then x plus i y would become coordinates and so a complex function would be split into real and imaginary parts. Applying the differentiability condition, the real part, we get dou u by dou x plus i dou v by dou, y, dou x. Similarly applying the differentiability condition on the imaginary part, we get dou v by dou y minus i dou u by dou y. Equating these two equations we get dou u by dou x equal to dou v by dou y and dou v by dou x equal to minus dou u by dou y. These are called the cauchy riemann equations which are a system of differential equations that every holomorphic function should satisfy on its domain. Now that we have had a look at the underlying topics, let us come back to analytic continuation. Let us look at sin x. When the given domain is closed interval 0 to pi by 2. In this case, we see that such a tiny interval is enough for us to determine the entire function as the Taylor series converges for all x belonging to real numbers. This is the simplest and best case scenario 
of analytic continuation where a small interval allows us to expand to the entire number line and the radius of convergence is infinite what if the radius of convergence is finite well say we know fx is 1 by x only around a small neighborhood around x equals 1 the taylor series being a geometric series converges in the interval 0 2 where it converges to 1 by x now that we have expanded the domain we can taylor expand for a higher value say 1.5 and the new taylor series does in fact converge for x belonging to 0 3 while agreeing to the previous values on 0 2 hence we can say that we have analytically continued the function to 0 3 we can continue to do this for every possible real number but this cannot be extended in the other direction as x equal to 0 stands as an insurmountable barrier to circumvent this problem we introduce the complex dimension this works because the taylor series or any power series in general makes perfect sense when x is complex now going back to the original taylor series when we say modulus of x minus 1 is less than 1 it means a disk of radius 1 centered at x equals 1 on the complex plane the radius of convergence can literally be thought of as a disk of radius 1 this phenomenon holds true for every convergent power series now using the taylor series at a point of real axis we may get around the singularity and then we would have analytically continued the function for all possible values in what may appear as a punctured complex plane using complex numbers provide us with insights which are otherwise hidden let us examine fx equals 1 by 1 plus x square which is defined and differentiable for all x belonging to r but the taylor series at x equal to 0 has a radius of convergence of just 1 this is because the function presents with singularities at x equals plus and minus i